Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now lately I feel like Olight has absolutely been stepping it up with their weapon lights. Like for example, their Balder line of firearms lights, absolutely fantastic. Here on my Mossberg 590, this is the Balder Pro. Recently they came out with the Balder Pro R, which is their rechargeable weapon light. Their Odin series of lights, which have been progressing and well here today, what we're going to look at here, the Odin GLM, which here, this is a mountable weapon light, more in the form factor of a tactical flashlight. Now, I have not yet opened this up. I am going to get into this for the first time. So this is a little bit of a first look, first impression and unboxing video. And in the future, you'll see this showing up from time to time as I get my firearms out to the range or where I find this is useful in my firearms lineup. And so again, today's video, more on this unboxing. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Olight who did provide this for review. Now again, the Odin GLM. More on the firearm side of things, it's really a cross between a tactical light, but yet a firearms light. This has an excellent output, just a high quality beam, good powerful throw, but also a laser. That is one thing that I definitely have enjoyed about the Balder Pro. The fact that I can get this mounted on the front of my firearm, I get the laser right on the front, which definitely helps with targeting. That is very nice. I have enjoyed it. It's worked very well, extremely effective. And for me, for that mid range. Now for me, I practice a lot of times indoors. The indoor range for me maxes out at 25 yards. So I really can't go very far out. So I do have this laser set for right around there. I am really curious at this point how this Odin GLM is going to work in that application. I'm not sure if this can be adjusted for windage and elevation. I'm really not too sure, but the only way to figure it out is to get into this. So let's get into the unboxing. Now here, the Odin GLM. This is the newest flashlight in the Odin lineup. They've been doing a great job. These have been very well received. A number of different models at this point. This one's gonna be a little bit larger, have a very nice throw, but also adding the laser. So as we look at the packaging, very typical to Olight products. But here, well, we are going to use the O knife. And here, opening this up, this knife here is the Beagle, which I covered in a review on my primary Outer Limitless channel, which I do greatly enjoy these O-Knife products. So the Olight O-Knife, again, this is the Beagle. I've been carrying this literally as my EDC for quite a while now, fantastic knife. But again here, the Odin GL. Now, I do think that Olight does a very nice job with their packaging. One thing that I've said a number of times, I think it's really cool where what they do is the actual size of the product on the outside of the box is the exact size of the product once you get your hands on it, which is kind of neat. Going through this, they always do a nice job, a little bit of a magnetic enclosure here. Pretty standard Olight packaging at this point. So thank you for the support. Getting into it here, basic instructions and your before first use, but removing the light itself. So here again, the Odin GLM. Now, as you look here, pretty nice form factor in terms of the actual size of this light. It's based on, I would say that 18650 sort of platform in terms of the overall size, a little bit longer. Um, just a touch girthier, but at the same time, very, very nice. This is a beautifully made flashlight, as are all Olight products. Digging a little deeper here, nicely done the way they have this little sort of pull tab. Subtle details on the packaging, but it all adds up in presentation. Now here, you will see, so a remote switch with your low and high button. 
You can see here it can be adapted to a pick rail. And then on the back, here's your connector. This does go on the back where you have your magnetic tail cap. And in terms of installation, check this out. Boom. No problem. You lock this down, I assume. Yeah, maybe not. Just sort of spins. Very interesting. Oh, push to lock. There you go. Wow. Very nice. So push to lock. That's on there. And then pull it back and remove it. Wow. Very clever. I like that a lot. Great design. I guess the question would be, how is it out in the field? But I mean, so simple. Nothing to it. That is nice. And finally, inside here, as we open this up, this is your magnetic charger. So typical proprietary magnetic charger that you do get with very many Olights. So your MCC 1 amp, 1.5 amp, and 2 amp magnetic adapter. Inside here, some hardware and a hex key with some M-lock components. So that is one thing you will notice. This does come with some M-lock components here. So be careful not to lose these tiny little pieces, which is why I love myself a good dish. So here, a magnetic dish, which is funny. None of this is magnetic, so it must all be aluminum parts. Except for maybe some of these little screws you can see. So very interesting. So again, this is your M-Lock mount. So they kind of ship the hardware and then the mount itself a little bit separate. So here you can see this is an M-Lock mount. And then last but not least, deep down on the inside here, a couple of cable ties, so zip ties, and your instruction manual. So this does come fully outfitted really to get down to some serious business. So depending on exactly what you're trying to do, depending on what firearm you're trying to mount to, there is a whole bunch going on here. So at this point, I'm gonna kind of remove some of this packaging, get everything out of the way, and we're gonna get into the details. So typically when you get started with an Olight, you gotta do a little bit of work here just to get this prepared. So remove the tail cap, pull a little film, both off the front of the lens, but then also they protect the battery. And one thing you'll notice is they do a fantastic job with their threads. Everything comes nice, gasketed, and well lubricated. As we get into this here, sliding out the battery. So I was a little bit wrong. As I said, it seemed a little thicker than an 18650. Well, here you go. This is why a 5,000 milliamp hour 21700 lithium ion battery. This is a nice workhorse battery. Nice overall um, size output. Uh, generally speaking, the 5,000 milliamp hour should provide some pretty good longevity and at the same time some pretty good punch. So a great battery and absolutely fantastic to have it here in the Odin GLM. But as we get this back and installing the cap again, listen. Nice, smooth, even threads, well machined and tightening that down. Little half press there, ooh. First thing that's interesting, you are not gonna be able to pick up on this, but as I depress the button, it is a hepatic feedback. So this actually vibrates in my hands to tell me that the light is turning on. So again, hepatic feedback, very interesting. Now that's the first time I depress the light as I continue to press at this point, half press, that's momentary. It's not giving me that same feedback. You can fully depress, and lock it in. That's a little funny to me. As I'm trying to depress it here. There you go. Actually, you can hear it audibly clicks. So that's locking that on. So a full click. So a little half press there is your momentary and then releasing it. Full click. Full. Mm. I don't know. This button's giving me a little bit of a hard time. But. We'll press on. Might just be a matter of, look it. Okay. 
I think part of the problem for me is it ends up with these sort of extensions here, which is to allow this to tail stand. In my opinion, that's just taking away a little bit from your positive sort of ability to depress fully. You can see I'm like trying to do it. I gotta like spin the light around. This is not working very well. So unfortunately for me so far, uh, functionality wise, not the best. So a little bit disappointed right away, gotta be honest. Working through the front of the light here, you can see this does have multiple modes. So that is the laser mode, so there. Yeah, let's see if maybe I had that part way off. I don't think that would have been the problem, but. All right, so working with my index finger, but that's not the best. So it seems like maybe if you're not careful and you don't have this dial fully engaged all the way to one side or another, maybe it's not quite as responsive as you'd like. So I did seem to make a difference once now. That's definitely operating better. So you can see a little more positive in terms of turning it on. So that makes me feel a lot better. I would call that hopefully user error. Sliding this over, you can see positively moving over. Now it will get stuck in the middle if you're not careful, but moving that over. Now here, this is combination white light and laser. So this should have a low mode if you depress lightly. So a low mode and then pressing deep. There's your high mode, low, high, low, high. Again, little half press, not depressing fully. That's going to be your low mode. And then going the rest of the way and burying it, that's your high mode. So low mode on the Odin GLM 300 lumens, high mode on the GLM 1500 lumens. On the low mode, you get about six hours and 30 minutes of runtime. On the high mode, you get about two and a half minutes of runtime. Then it dims down to about 168 minutes and then it dims down to about 20 minutes. In terms of the steps, it goes from 100% beam to what they're calling 37% beam and then to what they're calling about 20% beam. So in terms of lumen output, you will see that below. And then as we slide the dial, so again, you have that half press. Now you're not able to really see the laser too much in this particular view because the white light is certainly overpowering the laser. But as I beam off, yeah, it works good. You'll see that in a little bit. I'll give you some good beam shots. You can definitely see the white light and the laser, which I think definitely is advantageous. And again, full press, same thing. But now moving forward, what we're gonna do, we're gonna rock this a little bit different sliding over to this mode here, which is white light only. Again, half press 300 lumens, full press 1500 lumens. Now the full 1500 mode translates to roughly about 11,556 candela. Candela is pretty much punch and intensity at distance. So here you have a throw in the high mode of roughly 215 meters with that 1500 lumens translating to about 11,556 candela, which is a fair amount. It's not like incredibly intense, but at the same time, it's solid. I think that's going to be a good amount for a weapon light, especially where you have the 200 meter throw. But for me, the light is a little less about distance and a little more about sort of close up because, well, bottom line is I will be mounting this on my shotgun, which in reality is not going to be that long range sort of intended use. A little more mid range, a little more short range, where for me, where this is gonna come into play, first and foremost, identify a target, and then second, using that laser to help really aim it in. So this is gonna be a good dual use item where you get to positively identify your target, but then again, at the same time, when you need to aim on target, you have that as well. Now, one thing I do see here as you look, there are some adjustment screws. That's huge. That's going to be your elevation and windage adjustments, which is why I'm sure they do give you the Allen key. So very nice. I'm glad that's there. That's going to make this a very uh, useful and dialable and configurable light for many different applications. 
Now taking a minute to look at the overall construction, 08 always doing a very nice job. So here you can see, very nicely crafted, the Odin GLM on the side, the Olight branding, and again on this side too. The interesting thing is you'll notice the way they did this actually pretty nice no matter which way you have it, um, as long as it's sort of canted with the mount on the top, you'll notice that the Olight logo is in the upright position. Now. Looking at the front, you'll notice a little bit of a strike bezel, and inside you have that lens, very nice and smooth reflector on the inside, so a good clear beam pattern. Like always, very well machined, very nicely done. Generally speaking, Olight does a fantastic job with their craftsmanship. That's absolutely the case here with the Odin GLM. Now keep in mind, again, this does come with the M-Lock adapter, so this is part of the standard kit. However, for me, well, I wanted to really get that mounted on my Mossberg 590, which means I needed a different adapter. So here you'll see I purchased the pick rail adapter. I am hoping this works flawlessly with the Olight here. So the Odin GLM, it should work just fine. I don't think I'm going to have any problems, but the only way to figure that out is to get into this. So this is pretty straightforward. I do want to pay a little bit of attention here. This can easily index inside there, so you'll see that goes no problem. But at the same time, I don't think, ah, it's hard to say that I want to side mount this, but again, I certainly could. When you look at the fore end of my 590, you can see I just have these covers covering up really some of the pick rail just to make it a little bit softer on my hands as I'm gripping the front and to not chew up my hands. Um, you could mount this a number of different ways. I mean, you could certainly go low and underneath, which I, I really think that's what I want to do. You could go off of the side, which is another option. Uh, I also, actually, if you look at this side, I have the ability to go at a 45 degree angle. So that is certainly another option. I could actually go up high with this and kind of get it at a 45, which might be pretty cool. But then my brain says, once I start setting this up, I do need to adjust my elevation and windage. And the more and more I kind of futz with this, uh, the more difficult it might be to get this sighted in. So from a basic sort of straightforward installation that I know I can get sighted in perfectly, I think I'm best to go on the bottom of this rail, which is what I'm going to do for this example. So I will be able to get this mounted nicely on the bottom here. And then the other thing I'm thinking about is, well, what about this magnetic adapter? Because at this point, this would be a fantastic addition to this. Now, if I am careful, I could get this nicely mounted on the pick rail, probably up and around this area. And then hopefully not by accident, activate the light when I'm actually firing if I don't want to, which means this actually puts the weapon light more on the side. So I do have a couple of options. I think working square versus canted at that 45 is gonna be my best option. So I'm thinking at this point, let's mess around a little bit and get this mounted on the side. All right, so now with the covers removed, first thing, I'm gonna to start to mount the actual light itself. So the first thing to consider is the actual Allen screw here. So these uh, sort of hex heads and there is an additional package of hardware here. So an additional hex key and some additional bolts. So setting the bolts aside here. Now, the interesting thing is paying attention to the mount on the light itself. You can actually go straight to M-Lock adapter with this. You do not necessarily need the 45 degree adapter. So that is something to consider. You can go straight to M-Lock leveraging these holes, but I am not. I'm now gonna loosen up on these bolts for this Picatinny adapter. So this did come with this Allen wrench. The Allen wrench was actually part of the pick adapter, not the flashlight itself, but just loosening that up, buying myself some space. And now thinking about how this is going to mount, I could do a couple of things. If I'm careful, this light could either go on the side or even possibly still on top, which is kind of cool. Or if I go this way on the side or even still on the bottom, which is also pretty cool. 
I think for this, I'm going to go with it at the bottom and mounting it about as far forward as I can. No problem getting on this, that's nice. So I have no like clearance issues, uh, no difficulty getting on this. So this works out extremely well. This is a nice adapter, I like that. But that's certainly tight enough. Now, as you look here, this knob here, I have this now in the unlocked position, which actually allows me to take the light and slide it into place. So here, sliding the light in, that goes in, nice positive click, and then this locks it, which is awesome. So I can now take this little knob here, turn it to the right, and this light can't even come out. So that's pretty awesome. Keep in mind, that is the same functionality that you get with the included 45 degree adapter. Now I've since removed the remote itself from this little carrier. And I kind of want to think about how this is going to fit and how this is going to sort of nest the wire down and out of the way, which means this really needs to go this direction. You'll notice one side is notched to allow the wire to feed through. Popping this down and into place. Now just for leverage, I did need to work off camera for a split second, but that went on with ease, no problem. Taking the remote now and feeding it back and into place. So that sits right down and inside. That's pretty nice. Now with the included sort of zip ties, I can tidy that up a bit, make that nice and clean. And that's gonna be a pretty nice install right there on the side of this Mossberg. Now I'm very curious to see what happens here. As you notice, the logo literally upside down. I don't know if this is gonna be happy with this setup and my ability to now adjust both the windage and elevation and get this lined in. But just for the basics, let's take a look at this and see how it feels in my hands. Part of me likes how super clean this Balder Pro was. Just underneath the forend, no problem, stayed out of the way, working very nice. Now, with the Odin GLM, you know, you're gonna have a little bit of a hard time seeing that, so I'm gonna rotate around this way. You can see here, actually not too bad. It does protrude off the side quite a bit, so as you look at it here, you'll notice this does protrude quite a bit off the side, but still works for me. Does give me the room I need and clearance for my hand to grip, although I do have to say my thumb is hitting just a little bit on this. I might find that with a little bit of practice, I get used to it, or I might need to actually swap this around to the other side. I'm not too sure yet, I'm just kind of feeling this out. But the other thing I could certainly do, which is a possibility, get this to the underside and then I have to decide what I'm gonna do, whether I use the remote or I don't use the remote, not too sure. But at this point here, getting on the firearm, reaching underneath, this is your high button. So here, high, and pressing it down, momentary. Single press real quick, that locks it on, no problem. And then again, the low button. So again, single press, no problem. Now that's with the light mode. Let's actually take a second here. We're gonna spin this dial. That's gonna be the laser mode. The high button, well, that activates the laser. So you can see there. And what about the low mode? Also activates the laser. A real quick press locks it on. So that is fully locked on at this point. Pressing it again and off. So generally speaking, this is pretty nice actually having that right on the forend if I was getting into my stance and gripping. This does get a little bit in the way. I'm kind of bummed out about that just a bit. I can't say for sure whether or not I'm gonna like that. And unfortunately, I think this is gonna smash into my hand every time I fire. So this might not quite work in this configuration. Now, if I wanna remove the light, one thing that is fantastic You'll notice here, I've now unlocked this. So literally swiveling this from the locked position to unlocked. And at this point, depress, and that releases the light. That's really cool. This kind of like presses into place, 
locks into place. It's not coming out, but then you double lock it, no problem. But again, pressing that button, that releases it and it can come out. Nicely done, the mounts here for the Odin line, very nice. And so now you'll notice swapping sides. The issue I have here is I kind of need to route the cable a little different. My hand isn't quite as big a deal because now I'm not banging into the light. I have plenty of room to grip. My hand can slide up and underneath here, no problem. I can get down on the controls for the light. That does not seem to be a problem. As I shoulder mount, that's actually gonna work out pretty good. But the routing, really at this point, I just need to be careful of this cable. Maybe I'll tuck it kind of up this way and that seems like it will work. So that for me is a pretty good viable option. That feels nice. Again, getting on the light here as I reach underneath. So no problem. Leaning on the button, there's that laser. And if I spin the light, that's the one thing I'm gonna have to get used to reaching forward. And there you go. So there's your high, pushing forward low. So that does give you the general ability to see where you're going, to identify your target. And this also has the laser, which is nice. So at this point, let's give you some beam shots so you can kind of see how this looks. But this Odin GLM, so far going pretty good. So you can see here, installing a bore laser. So this is a bore laser. So anytime you fire, this will emit a laser beam. This helps me to kind of sight in things that have um, windage and elevation adjustments. Red dot sights, uh, and in this case, the Odin GLM. So let's get some shots on target, see how this is working out for me. Let's see if I can get this sort of zeroed in. Now, granted, I'm not gonna be at too far of a distance, but it's just some practice. So as you're looking over my shoulder, you can see here, I have the laser trained right on the target. Taking a shot here, you can see my actual shot is far up and left. So this definitely needs to be dialed in and dialed in hard. Now here, as you take a look at this, this is the windage and elevation adjustments. And unfortunately, their instructions do not determine which of these is windage and which is uh, elevation. So I'm just gonna have to sort of sit here, mess around with it a little bit and sort of figure it out. So give me a minute, I'll be back. And so at this point, I'm not gonna pretend this is perfect, but it is pretty darn good. So here, as you look, green and red hitting just about the same. I mean, again, certainly not perfect, but it's at least reasonable. Now I can't tell you which one of these was windage and which was elevation, to be honest with you, I just had to mess with it. And I don't have a good bench rest and I probably could have done this completely better. But bottom line is I was able to get this zeroed in and at this distance, at least pretty easy. Now, is this perfect? No, I definitely need to get this more to a practical distance, but this is a good start. It can do it. And so that's the laser you can see again, no problem. We're gonna change modes here. So dialing this to the combination laser and light, which you can see there, the laser, you can definitely pick that up. Pretty darn close. And then finally, just the light itself. You can see here, looking at the beam, pretty tight hot spot overall with some decent flood off to the side. And if I completely kill my studio lights here, well, that's pretty nice. So getting on the switch on the bottom here, this is the low mode. So getting on the low mode and then the high. And again, you get that hepatic feedback when you turn the light on. So it is kind of interesting, even with the remote switch. So again, low, high, off. Now, one thing that's interesting is you can even add a tactical ring. So if you want to carry this, you can add a tactical ring. You'll see, depending on how you want to grip it, it gives you a little bit of purchase there and you're still able to get on the buttons with ease. So that's an interesting little adapter there. Just kind of goes on, uh, threads into place there, no problem. 
and you can see those bolt holes. But there you can see the Olight Odin GLM allowing this to have just a little bit of a tactical ring if you so choose. And so, all right guys, there you have a look at the Odin GLM. How do I feel about it? Mixed results. I mean, some of this is me, so you can't really chalk all this up to the light, not at all. I mean, some of it's me, some of it's the exact firearm I'm trying to mount it to, what my objectives are and how it's going to work for me. And keeping in mind, well, the bar was set pretty hard when I got this Balder Pro, which I instantaneously fell in love with. It's absolutely fantastic, and it fits on the front of my Mossberg 590 with ease. So that is something that I'm considering. I mean, why add all this contraption and difficulty when I have such a perfect light on the front? But it is a little more flexible. You can pop it off, it gives you the ability to have a nice tactical light. That's awesome. I do like the overall beam quality, the build quality, and the fact that this is rechargeable. So the GLM, definitely a nice weapon light overall. I think it looks actually pretty good on the front of this. Isn't too bad in terms of taking up additional real estate. And the other thing that I'm very happy, and I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it, but as we cast off into the distance here, not too much shadow from the front of my muzzle. Not too bad there. Maybe a little bit as you see here, kind of casting up and off to the side. And the fact that I could get this laser dialed in, not too bad. So all in all, definitely sweet. And so again, I'd like to say thank you very much to the people at Olight who did provide this for review. And for the rest of you, if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is my primary channel. On that channel, I cover everything from hiking, camping, and backpacking excursions, all the gear that goes with it, from the backpacks, sleep systems, shelter systems, knives, axes, flashlights, you name it. That's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.